Um, today you're going to continue reading stave three from where we got up to uh, last time. It's uh, page 66 in my uh, copy. I don't know what page it will be in yours. You're looking for by this time, uh, just after the uh, Christmas party. Um, and you're focusing on uh, these key questions. So the types of people, a common theme, uh, how these people compare to Scrooge, and what are they all doing? Um, and then we're going to pause uh, and, and answer some, some of those questions before we read a little bit more. So if you want to read that section, and when you've done that, uh, so you're looking for the different types of people. So the first thing to note is um, that at the beginning of this section of reading, uh, once again, think about kind of the weather. Um, it's it's presented very warm. We've got brightness. Um, we've got fires roaring, we've got flickering, you know, imagine at Christmas time when you're walking around, it's dark outside and you can see light inside and it's kind of warming and, and friendly and rich curtains. It's presenting like a nice warm scene. And again, the joy that everyone's feeling. Um, we've got all this listing here. Everybody's kind of celebrating um, and you know, they're all chattering. There's this huge energy. And once again, it's glowing. Um, and then Dickens is sort of saying, you know, don't be misled into thinking that this is just a kind of um, uh, a rich centred city sort of environment. But actually, he then takes us uh, elsewhere to look at different people. So if you think it's just a city kind of or a wealthy thing, um, you would be wrong. So uh, we then get, you know, more of the working classes. Um, so we've got the lamplighter. So these are people that bef before we've got electricity and the lights just coming on, someone would go around and light the street lights. So, you know, not a very well wealthy person. Um, even the lamplighter was laughing with the with Christmas joy. So is Christmas is a classless thing. And suddenly then Dickens takes us to the most isolated place we can think of, a bleak and desert moor. A moor is like a um, open hill area, I guess. Um, so we're in the middle of nowhere and it's, you know, really empty and the sun's going down, so it's getting dark, and you've almost got this like uh, menacing Eye of Mordor type image of the sun coming down, and it's the darkest night. That superlative, just really emphasizing how unpleasant this scene is. And this is where the miners live. So think if you're mining, you're going to be dirty as well. So it's a so sooty environment. Um, it's monstrous, and all of that. Uh, and even even these hardworking individuals in the middle of nowhere with not a lot of money, even there we're finding cheerful company. Even there they're gathering around a fire. Even the old and the young, you know, everybody, again, this list, old, old man, woman, children, everybody is uh, having a positive uh, response to Christmas. Uh, and what are they doing? They're singing. Think about how that links to the title. And if you thought that place was bad enough, he takes us even further. So now we're we're at sea. So we're even more isolated, even more separate from kind of civilization. And again, it's a menacing environment, frightful range of rocks, a thundering water. Again, this negative imagery. Roaring and raging, dreadful. Waters chafed and dashed. It's not a pleasant environment and even in this place people have lit a fire even in this place they uh, are wishing each other a Christmas uh, happy Christmas and if that wasn't isolated enough we're going even further out to sea the black and heaving sea we're actually on, going to be on a boat now every man's humming a Christmas tune Every man is singing, wishing each other happy Christmas. 
so there's a contrast in this bit of the reading between these desolate, cold, unpleasant environments and this joy that they're experiencing. So when we go back to our questions, we're thinking, what's the common theme then? Joy, happiness, um, classlessness, uh, as in Christmas, joy is classless. Everyone experiences it. Coming together, but not being on your own. Um, think about how that compares to Scrooge, what he was sort of experiencing from stave one to, to, to what he's seeing here. Um, and think about what they're all doing and what that links to the title of the novella. And then when you've done that, you need to think about Fred. We talked about him earlier. Think about um, how he's kind of a contrast to Scrooge, how he's served as a binary um, opposite to, to kind of Scrooge and his attitude. What, what purpose does he have? What are the differences? Reflect, look back in your notes to find that. And then you're going to keep reading up to upon their travels. And when you've done that, you're looking for real focuses that Fred and his family are middle class, but significantly how he is um, an ideal middle class. So you're looking for kind of, I guess, idealistic imagery of him uh, and how Scrooge is feeling and how he changes. So um, from this section, it's worth kind of thinking about the, the repetition of great surprise. Um, it's not a coincidence, you know, Dickens is doing that deliberately. So this kind of dawning of realisation on Scrooge that he wasn't expecting this. Um, And we get to see Fred, so Fred's nephew, bright, dry, gleaming rooms. That's kind of middle class, I guess. And again, this kind of, I guess, repetition kind of uh, emphasizing how, how jovial, how cheer, cheery he is. Um, and when we're thinking about him being idealized, he's got the most blessed laugh it's like not just a laugh it's a great laugh um and you know his laugh is so good it is even even when things are bad when there's disease and sorrow his laugh is so good uh that it can kind of cure you so again this idealism again the repetition of his laughter and this is interesting scene because he, here Scrooge is witnessing them talking about him and kind of mocking um, Scrooge for his views on Christmas. Um, again, when we're thinking about him being idealised, you know, uh, look at how th this scene is. It's like beautiful. You know, she's a beautiful woman. Um, again, you know, Fred is kind of mocking Scrooge's viewpoint on Christmas, um, but not mocking him as a person. He says, you know, his offences carry their own punishments and I have nothing to say against him. Like, he's the one that's missing out. I'm not going to badmouth him. It's his, it's just kind of his problem. Um, you know, he's got wealth, but he doesn't do anything with it. Uh, He's never going to be generous with his money. And then worse, it's I'm sorry for him. It's pity. I couldn't be angry with him if I tried. So I feel like that's it's maybe a bit like if someone says, like, I'm disappointed in you. It's just so much worse than them being angry. If someone's angry, you can kind of argue back. If someone's disappointed or pitying you, it's like they it just hits you more so Scrooge witnessing this is going to be kind of it's going to be more pertinent to him um we're going back to him being kind of middle class think about a very good dinner they've been competent judges there was desserts it all seems nice and warm um we've got kind of this joy of uh you know potential romance 
energy. She's clapping her hands. It's happiness. This infectious laugh once again. And again, Fred's not really bad mouthing him. It's like, it's again this pity. He's missing out by not making merry with us. He's losing some pleasant moments. By not being here, he's suffering himself. Once again, I pity him. And, and again, think about Fred being um, selfless. Think about him being uh, idealized. You know, he goes there year after year and he's not doing it selfishly. Fred's not going there because he's desperate for Scrooge's company. He thinks it would help Scrooge at Christmas. But, you know, even if um, him going would allow Scrooge to be more charitable, to leave some money, to be to be a, a better person, he hopes, from his visit. Um, again, the repetition of laughter, semantic field of happiness, really. Good natured, joy. You, you could be highlighting all these things. And then if it wasn't a happy enough scene, then we're going to have some party games, just like you might have at Christmas. They've got music, um, a, a, you know, energy. They're all joining in. It's like a an idealised scene, isn't it, that everyone's getting involved. The young, the old, they're all playing instruments. Um, and it's reminiscent for uh, Scrooge. Um he thought he could have listened to it often years ago when he might have cultivated the kindness of life for his own happiness. Could have been, um, he could have had this, he's thinking about 